Hello viewers, welcome back to our channel. I am Divya Grover. In this video, I will explain the difference between index funds and active mutual funds. Over the past couple of years, we have witnessed mutual fund houses launch a growing number of schemes in the passive investment category such as exchange traded funds that is ETFs, index funds and fund of funds. Passive funds have gained popularity due to their low cost structure and ease of investment. While the higher inflows in ETFs can be attributed to contributions from Employees Provident Fund Organization that is EPFO, the rising AUM of index funds is a better proxy of popularity with respect to retail investors. Index funds have been in existence for a quite a long time now, but it is only in the last couple of years that they have got investors' attention. The number of index funds in the industries has risen from 47 schemes in October 2021 to 104 schemes in October 2023. Meanwhile, the combined AUM of these schemes have more than doubled to Rs 69,422 crore as of October 2023. With this, index funds appear to have gained a firm footing in the minds of investors. Though the asset size of index funds is still minuscule compared to actively managed funds, the growing popularity of index funds makes one wonder whether to choose an index fund or actively manage mutual funds. So let us first understand what are index funds. Index funds are passive mutual funds that generally track popular indices such as the Nifty 50, S&P BAC Sensex, Nifty 500, etc. These funds are mandated to invest a minimum of 95% of their total assets in securities that form part of the underlying index. A small portion of the fund can be held in cash and equivalents to meet the liquidity requirement under the scheme. The stocks and their weightage in the portfolio of an index fund are similar to that of the underlying index. The composition of the scheme's portfolio is altered only if the stocks and their weightage in the underlying index change. Accordingly, the portfolio turnover of an index fund is very low. Being passively managed, the expense ratio of index funds is significantly lower than actively managed funds. Furthermore, investing in index funds eliminates the risk of stock selection arising from any potential behavioral buyers or judgment errors of the fund manager. Another benefit of investing in an index fund is that investors do not have to go through the challenging task of selecting the best mutual fund from the plethora of actively managed funds available. This is because all funds tracking a particular index behave in the same way. Let us now find out the key differences between index funds versus mutual funds. The key difference between index funds and mutual funds is in terms of their portfolio management style, objectives, cost, investment style and the kind of returns they can generate. In terms of portfolio, index funds invest in specific stocks and other securities that form part of an index by replicating its composition. On the other hand, active mutual funds invest in securities that the fund managers choose based on factors such as the investment mandate of the scheme, prevailing market conditions, relative valuations, as well as the market outlook. Another difference is in terms of investment objective of these schemes. Index funds aim to match the performance of the benchmark index as they simply replicate the portfolio of the respective index. On the contrary, active mutual funds aim to outpace the performance of benchmark index by following an active investment strategy. The style of management too differs significantly when it comes to index funds and active mutual funds. Index funds are passively managed. The fund managers simply invest in securities forming part of the targeted benchmark in the same proportion as the underlying index. Whereas, active mutual funds use various investment strategies such as value, growth or a blend of both for selecting equities. Meanwhile, they may use accrual or duration strategies in the case of debt mutual funds depending on the type of scheme, investment mandate and the overall market conditions. This helps them to take advantage of dynamic market conditions and make tactical allocations in attractive looking stocks, sectors, market cap, etc. One of the important factors that attracts investors towards index funds is its low cost structure. Index funds do not need fund managers' active participation to select the stocks for the portfolio and hence the expense ratio of these schemes 
is comparatively lower than active mutual funds. Actively managed mutual funds, on the other hand, involve active participation by the fund managers in doing industry research, selecting the right securities, timing the entry exit points in the underlying securities, etc. Hence, the expense ratios of active mutual funds are relatively higher. And finally, the performance of index funds and active mutual funds vary considerably. As mentioned earlier, index funds only replicate the portfolio of popular indices. Therefore, the performance of these funds closely resembles that of its benchmark index subject to tracking error and expense ratio. A tracking error is the difference in returns between an index fund and the index which it is tracking. In the case of active mutual funds, the returns can vary significantly compared to that of the underlying index. This can happen because the fund managers may churn the portfolio and have an overweight, underweight position in different stocks and sectors which may or may not align with that of the underlying index. Moving on, let's get to know about the different types of index funds available in India. Earlier, most index funds tracked only large cap indices such as the Nifty 50 and the S&P BAC Sensex plus a few sectors such as banking. However, in the recent years, mutual funds have launched index funds that track various categories such as equity and debt, different themes such as ESG and global, sectors like pharma and IT as well as other innovative products to help investors create a diversified portfolio. Index funds can be typically classified as follows. The first one is market-based index funds. These are index funds that track indices that are weighed by their market capitalization, namely large cap, mid cap or small cap. The Nifty 50 index, the Nifty mid cap 150 index, Nifty small cap 250 index and the Nifty 500 index are examples of market-based index funds. The second type is factor-based index funds also known as smart beta funds. The stock selection and weights in these schemes are based on predefined factors like value, momentum, quality, low volatility, etc. Most smart beta funds consist of single factor, for example, schemes tracking Nifty 100 Quality 30 Index, Nifty 50 Value 20 Index, Nifty 50 Equal Weight Index, etc. In addition, there are some multi-factor index funds that replicate indices that use a mix of two or more factors, for instance, the Nifty Alpha Low Volatility 30 Index. The third type is sector or theme-based index funds. These schemes invest in businesses operating within a particular industry, sector or theme, such as banking, IT, pharma, infrastructure, manufacturing, MNC, etc. Sector or theme-based index funds track sectoral indices like the Nifty Infrastructure Index, S&P BSE Healthcare Index, S&P BSE Financial Services Index, Nifty Banking Index, Nifty MNC Index, etc. The fourth type is international index funds that aim to offer geographical diversification. These funds aim to track popular offshore indices such as the S&P 500 Index, NYSE Fang Plus Index, NASDAQ 100 Index, etc. And finally, investors have the option to invest in debt-oriented index funds. Debt-based index funds track custom debt indices such as Grisil IBX 6040 HDL Plus AAA PSU April 2025 Index, Nifty GSEC September 2032 Index, Grisil IBX AAA March 2024 Index, etc. that carry varying maturities and credit profiles. In conclusion, both index funds and active mutual funds have their own sets of benefits that may help investors to achieve their financial goals. The decision of whether to invest in index funds or active mutual funds or a combination of both should be based on an individual's investment objectives, risk profile and investment horizon. This brings us to the end of the video. For more guidance on mutual fund investments, subscribe to Personal FN's YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends and relatives. Signing off for now, happy investing. Investment in securities market are subject to market risk. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.